Good evening. Tonight, I'd like to reflect with you on the gospel reading for Monday of the 10th week of Ordinary Time. It's taken from the beginning of chapter 5 of St. Matthew's Gospel. It's the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, with Jesus proclaiming the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They say that when Lord Cornwallis surrendered to the American Revolutionary Forces at Yorktown, in 1781, the band played The World Turned Upside Down. Today in the gospel, we have Jesus uh, teaching his disciples. Jesus has gone up the mountain, uh, just as Moses went up the mountain to get the law. Jesus sat down on the ground as teachers did. They taught from a seated position. Jesus began to teach his disciples. You can imagine Jesus in the Mount of the Beatitudes sitting there Imagine yourself hearing his words for the first time. But he doesn't say what we would expect. Literally, he tells his disciples what he expects of them, what their spirituality should be, what their dispositions should be, what his expectations are for them. But it is anything but what the world values. Indeed, Jesus turns the world upside down for his disciples, telling them how they ought to live as he gives them be the Beatitudes, which are all the more appropriate in this day and age. Pope Francis, a few years ago, wrote an apostolic exhortation called Gaudete et Exultate, Rejoice and Exult, uh, in which he meditated on these Beatitudes, saying that these were the Christian's identity card, if you will. You had to have these characteristics, if you will, to be truly a disciple of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's not necessarily material poverty. In his homily uh, on the Beatitudes, Pope St. Leo the Great saw, like many, the Beatitudes laying out a program for spiritual growth. But poverty of spirit is not merely material poverty. Rather, it is detachment from worldly things. Magnanimous poverty frees us to be generous. Leo asks, what is richer than this poverty? Since the poor in spirit have a heavenly perspective, they do not mourn over earthly setbacks. Rather, they mourn over things that keep them from heaven, especially their sins and their sins of others. And so Leo the Great says that both the rich and the poor alike can practice this virtue of poverty of spirit. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Last week, we had four funerals here at the parish, and we could see how members of the parish comforted one another. But we could also think of George Floyd and his family. Regardless of who he was in life, his death was very tragic, and many people mourn his loss. And there is also an outpouring of support trying to comfort his family. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. What about those who mourn because they have been treated shabbily because of their race? What are we to, how are we going to comfort them? Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. So often when we don't get our way, we complain, we want to fight back. But the meek patiently bear and endure certain sufferings. It is they who will inherit the land. They are humble like Jesus. Blessed are they who are hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. In many ways, it's hungering and thirsting for righteousness uh, is also a call for justice. Righteousness and justice go hand in hand. What is justice but giving another person his or her due? Begins with 
hungering and thirsting for justice and giving God his due, and then also giving our neighbor his or her due. St. Leo the Great says, God himself is supreme righteousness. And so God wants us to be just. Justice demands that we be just. And so we continue with the Beatitudes, trying to show justice. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. So often we want revenge. Yet in the Lord's Prayer, we say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus himself says, unless you forgive your brother from your heart, neither will my heavenly Father forgive you. And again, the measure with which you measure will in turn be measured out to you. Jesus from the cross shows us what mercy looks like when he says, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. How often we are imprisoned by our grudges. We hold on to past hurts and we don't forgive. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. How many things block our vision of God? How much ugliness there is in the world. What God wants us to see is his sacred face. How often we also ignore the face of God, the image of God in our neighbor. When our hearts have been made pure by imitating God, reflecting the God, divine goodness, then we in turn will come to see God. We need to have pure hearts, innocent hearts. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. How often when children come and confess, they say, oh, they fought with their brothers and sisters, they kicked, they bite, they bit, they did all kinds of things. Um, especially to their little brothers and sisters. And I encourage them to be peacemakers. The beautiful prayer of St. Francis, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. How often today people, again, want to butt heads. They shout at each other. They talk past each other rather than trying to be reconciled. Blessed are the peacemakers, for it is they who will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. How often people are persecuted for their faith in Jesus, for being in right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and being unabashed in their profession of their faith. They will know the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Gaudete et exultate. What are we prepared to suffer for the Lord Jesus? Only when we are willing to suffer and to expose ourselves for his sake, then we will have our true reward. We will be imitating the prophets who were persecuted before us. In the gospel, over the next few weeks, we'll be hearing from the Sermon on the Mount, but we will also be hearing this, the story of the prophet Elijah, uh, the Tishbite, in our first reading each day. Elijah was one of the greatest prophets, but he had to suffer much as a prophet of the Lord. Sometimes he would starve and the ravens would have to bring him his food. Other times he would have to lie, rely on, on the widow and her son for a little bit of bread and oil just to survive. He would be forced uh, into hiding because Jezebel would try to kill him. He would take on the false prophets of Baal. All of this Elijah did, and he was filled with the Spirit of God. He was persecuted, and yet God highly exalted him, eventually taking up taking him up in a whirlwind when the glory of the Lord was seen. The glory of the Lord awaits us if we can adopt these, the spirit of the Beatitudes. May this pattern which the Lord himself gives us in his greatest sermon that he ever gave, if we could just adopt these as our way of life, our whole way of life, not mere teaching, but a way of life, then we would see the glory of God and truly be happy with him now and forever. May God bless you.